Hello, welcome to turn 16. Uh, there's some construction work going on in the background. That's somebody elsewhere. Um, I, I don't know if you can hear it. That's what it is. I, there's no other time I could record this episode, so unfortunately, but you can hear hammers. It's it's yeah. Anyway, let's get to the turn, shall we? First of all, a message from Ermor. Throne of Autumn is underwater. Mages of Autumn will never be available. Everything is pointless. Which, I don't know, that's like some kind of weird suicide haiku, I think, I don't know what that is. Apparently we'll never be able to recruit Mages of Autumn, and for some reason this is bad, I don't know. I don't know. Messenger from Abyssia. This map makes me want to die IRL. <laughs> Alright, another suicide note. Seems to be a theme, okay. Battle in the Woods of Weeping. Okay, so this was us attacking Mulvoni's Fort. Let's find out how it went, shall we? Um, technically this is just us killing the province defense, which isn't that interesting, but, you know. You get to see my mages all doing their thing. Vine arrows, some lightning bolts, a few flying shards, smite, a slime. Thun big thunderstrike. Thunderstrike does quite a lot of damage, actually. I think there was a vine arrow that just got a kill as well, that's pretty cool. Oh, Javelin just scared off the slingers, it looks like. Yep. Alright, I'll put it on turbo mode now. So, as you can see, killing the province defense was pretty easy. Uh, even my wolf tribe warriors got a little couple of kills in there at the end. And there we go. Total casualties, one wolf tribe warrior. And that was it. So, all in all, pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, and as you can see at the bottom here as well, the entrance to the fortica fortification in the Woods of Weeping has been breached. We can storm the fort any time now. So we had enough units with us to just topple that fort immediately because it was only a Palisades team. Uh, then there was a battle in Anglovania. This was actually Tiena Nog fighting Marverni, and as you can see, Marverni got brutally slaughtered. Um, but Tiena Nog did have significantly more units than he did. Um, so we watched this as well because it shows us what Tiena Nog can do. Tinanog apparently is very similar to me. Um, they have fur bogs like I do. And then they've got these cool dudes. Two Ather Warriors, which apparently are like Nemedian Warriors but better, which isn't fair. Um, yeah, they're very, very similar except they're sacred. So, and they've got um, Forest Survival, I guess, as well. So they're just strictly better. It's not very fair, is it? Oh well. So he has his mages scripted to cast spells for um, for five turns. Holy Avenger, Earth Shield, Soothing Song, which I think is just a uh, fatigue cure, and then his mages attack. And we've seen his mages before, those pony men dudes, and uh, we actually ruined it when we fought one. But um, they're still. I'm told that the pony men are very very scary once they get some self buffs. Um, so I'll have to watch out for Tien and Og. I didn't know that they were uh, an elf nation. Uh, and then of course I sent my scout to attack that province because I assumed it would be empty. Uh, and it wasn't, <laughs> but my scout just retreated so it was okay. Uh, then there was a battle in Enidra. This was the province that I attacked with my pretender. And there was absolutely nothing in it. There was like two units that was... They just routed immediately because they didn't have a commander and that was it. So not much of a fight. So we took this province with our pretender, and we captured the Woods of Weeping as well. Well, the province, not the fort. Um, unexpected event in Illidor. Yep, the dead rise from their graves. I wish... I don't... I, I don't know. I asked how long it takes for this these events to stop, and someone said it was like... from 1d3 to 1d6 to turns or something, but I'm pretty sure it's been six turns by now. Um, we're still getting zombie uprisings. Unexpected event occurred in the Woods of Weeping. A Starshine Skullcat was gained. Uh, kind of interesting. Uh, I might as well show off that item, might I? Uh, magic item treasury. Starshine Skullcat. It's an astral booster that also has magic resistance, so it's quite a nice little hat. Uh, unexpected event in Dragon Scale. Unrest plus 20, magic plus 1 from children disappearing in the night. I wonder if this has anything to do with the aliens that were skulking around. Um, we lost to Illidor to zombies, and the 
entrance to Woods of Weeping is open. Okay, so what are we doing this turn? Uh, first of all, my little side units are attacking Caves of Madness to take this province back. Interestingly, when I checked my army here, I, I right-clicked on this bar these barbarians to see what their stats were like, and I clicked on this guy, and he was horror-marked. So, like, nobody else is, it's, just, it's literally just that one guy. Um, that's kind of odd. So I'm wondering if there's, there's some kind of site in this province that horror marks units. Um, I, I don't know, just th thought I'd mention it anyway, it's kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, we're attacking Caves of Madness to take our, this province back from uh, zombies. I think that should be fine. Um, only sort of hiccup might be that, you know, it's Caves of Darkness, and my, my units only have partial dark vision. Uh, and the barbarians have no dark vision, of course. So, I don't know, let's we'll have to see how it goes. Hopefully we'll be okay though. Um, sight Searching Mage, who I've named Nurse, is still Sight, sight Searching. Uh, Playful Torture is still on our way to the front lines. Scouts are still moving out, as you can see. We're building a lab in Cuneral now, um, which actually delayed my recruitment in Fomoria. I had to recruit a uh, Philbog this time because of uh, money. Losing these provinces to zombies actually really hurt my income, because I'm pretty sure my income was at like 1-3 at one point. And then it's just a thousand. Uh, yeah. uh, and then there's the front lines. So, my pretender can either go here, where he'll probably get attacked by for, for, um, Tin and Arg immediately afterwards, which I don't want. Or it can start sieging with only on its own, which I also don't want. So my pretender is just heading to the Woods of Weeping. And meanwhile, all the units in the Woods of Weeping are storming the castle. So we'll, um, we'll fight whatever he has in the castle next turn. Uh, and see how that goes. And that's it for this turn, actually. There's nothing else to do. Don't have any gold, can't recruit mercenaries or anything. The only thing I mention is that because my research is so low at the moment, I've switched to enchantment. I'm going to get two levels in enchantment just for personal regeneration. Uh, and that's so that my pretender can cast it. Because my pretender has nature 3, so... Might as well spend the first turn of combat casting regen. Because um, that'll make him even more difficult to kill. Uh, I think that's everything. So, my temptation now is to send some kind of message to Tina Nog, maybe on IRC, and just say, hello, let's be friendly, and try and get him to make peace with me in some form. Because um, I don't want to fight him. I don't particularly want to fight um, Nicklin either, though. Gotta fight someone. Anyway, we've still got all these mob only provinces to clear up, so we can think about that later. Um... One other thing I wanted to do was I've got so many Ur gems now. I was thinking of casting, um, where is it? Hurricane on Marverni while we're attacking him. It says it increases unrest and kills population, so it might be kind of an interesting thing to dump on someone's capital, but I don't know, something to remember that I've got uh, when I have a, an Earth 3 mage sitting in a lab somewhere. And that was turn 16, so. Hopefully the noise in the background isn't audible. I'll try and edit it out if it is. Uh, and I'll see you on turn 17. Hello. New turn. First of all, research and enchantment was completed. Uh, like I said, I just want to get to enchantment 2 quickly. Just a slight detour. Uh, nothing too interesting here, I don't think. I guess the animate dead element skeleton stuff is something my mages can use, I guess. I don't know. Um, nurse found another magic site in Dragon Scale Mountains. Uh, elusive Lights. I wonder if that has anything to do with the aliens that are sneaking around my territory, who knows. Uh, but that's one fire gem and one earth gem per turn. Which is excellent. I've got great gem income at the moment. I just need to actually spend it, which I never seem to do. Um, okay, then there was a battle between Tin and Og and Marverni over here. As you can see, Tin and Og um, won, but Marverni was kind of uh, outnumbered. Poor Marverni, he's kind of been crushed very quickly in this game. Um, we can see again Tinanog's army. It's very similar to mine. But their mages uh, just buff up and then charge forwards. I'm not sure who would win if my army met Tinanog's army. Actually, because it didn't seem that difficult to kill the She Lords last time. 
I bombed into one, so I don't know. Uh, then there was a battle in the Woods of Weeping. This was Mulvaney attacking me before I stormed the fort. So I'll just show you how this went. Because interestingly enough, uh, it contained Mulvaney's pretender, his mom, the Great Mother, uh, who is also a size 6 trampler, just like my boar. Uh, but she regenerates. Uh, and she has a lot more magic paths and stuff like that. Um, far less protection though. Um, as you can see the rest of the army is just some ogres and a couple of crap units. Versus my whole army. Great Mother doesn't do much. She throws out uh, some flying shards and that's about it. But they are quite big flying shards I guess. And we kind of surround his pretender, but of course she's a trampler, so it's impossible to actually surround her. Um, but otherwise she would have died there. So that was uh, too bad. But yep, yeah, that was Marvel only attacking us. Uh, and as you can see, we only lost six units, so not a big deal for us. Um, Battle in the Caves of Madness, this was just my uh, little side army taking out the undead. Don't need to watch that. Uh, and then of course we stormed the fort, so let's see how that one went. Now, there was a huge upset in this fight. It happens um, right around the back lines-ish. Did you see that? Did you just see who, who just took 12 damage and died instantly? Did you see where that damage came from? I just lost my fucking Earth 3 Mage, Agony and Desperation. She did one Thunder Strike and then she was killed by the most random fucking projectile bullshit I've ever seen in my life. I'm very salty about that. I'm so fucking salty about that. And then the rest of the fight was, you know, trivial. God fucking damn my asshole. Alright, and then we won. Okay, so. We lost one Nemedian Sorceress, two Furbogs, and two more Furbogs. Um, and I've only lost everything. I and I'm like I still think this was a this was a draw at best because I should not have lost that sorceress. I'm so fucking I'm done. All right. So other than that, you know, time went okay. Uh, unexpected event in in Idra. Population minus 140, death plus one. Always nice. And unexpected event in Gaeta. People are taking some extra time off from their chores. Sloth plus one. So, you know, fair enough. Um, Alright. So what's happening now? Well now, Tina Nog's army is adjacent to Marvoni's cap, and my army is adjacent to Marvoni's cap. So the question now is, is Tina Nog going to attack Marvoni next turn? I don't know. Um, if I still had my Thunderstrike capable mage, I'd feel a lot safer about this. But I don't know, I'm, I'm down to my most powerful mage, unfortunately. Um, but I'm going to attack Marvani anyway, and if Tinanog also attacks, um, I don't know. I guess I just have to hope that I win, because if I don't, I'm that's that probably be me out of the game. Because that will just be such a gigantic setback. Um, but I think it's worth it. Worth the risk. Meanwhile, of course, my uh, pretender is going to claim the throne here. This is the Throne of Stars. Two Astral Gems, spreads Dominion as well, which would be useful. I'm actually quite light on white candles, except this area is quite nice. And then everywhere else, my provinces have just no candles in at all. Um, so yeah, I'm attacking Mulvaney with all this that we've seen before. Um, I don't have any Thunderstrikes this time though. It's going to be two turns before Playful Torture gets there. 
Uh, and I'm also sending out these two little druids as well, because why not? Um, this solo commander is heading to Black Forest to pick up some troops. The Anfor's little group of uh, units, these guys, are going to head back to Illidor to retake Illidor from fucking zombies. Um, and that's it for major moves, actually. Everything else that's moving around is just a uh, site searching mage heading to Valadon. Uh, we've got scouts moving around. Lots of scouts. All these grey arrows are scouts. Uh, and that's it. So, all that we need to see happen next turn is what happens in Mulvaney's cap. Um, is Mulvaney patrolling? Does Tinanog attack it? Do I attack afterwards? Do I get killed by Tinanog? Do I beat Tinanog? All those questions and more will be resolved uh, next turn. And research will almost have enchantment too. I can't really use my pretender in the fights in this area because as you can see, he's down to 21, uh, 22 hit points here, which is not great. That's just because there's no white candles over here. Um, so he's just claiming the throne. I probably won't bring him into battle yet. I might stick him at the back and just have him cast Blade Wind or something like that. Might be safe. Um, and that's the end of the turn. Recruitment wise, nothing interesting to report, just mages and a couple of fur bogs over here. And a couple of fur bogs over here. And that's it. So I'll see you on turn 18. Hello, welcome to turn 18. Um, sh short list of messages as you can see. Also, you may notice that we were not attacked by Tinanog. There was no clash. Hooray! Because I was kind of worried about that. I thought if they attacked at the same time that we did, I thought Tinanog will probably beat us. Um, yeah. Anyway, message from Agartha. Everyone, let us put aside our petty squabbles to murder Spilly Thing, the Ermor dude who has submitted two incomplete turns in a row. <laughs> yeah. So you can mark your turn as unfinished. Um, and that just means that the, the server won't tick over to the next turn. Um, because your, your turn is, you know, incomplete. But, um, I don't know. That doesn't mean he didn't take his turn, it just means that he he took his turn and then marked it as unfinished just in case he wanted to go back and do some more, but I guess, I don't know. Uh, yeah, anyway, Ad Hoc Dentistry, that's me, I claim the Throne of Stars. Uh, and then there was a battle in Marvoni, so let's watch the battle in Marvoni, shall we? Uh, this is me fighting more PD, so it's not that interesting. But as I said, the, the most important thing is um, Tin and Og is not involved. <laughs> Tin and Og did not fight me immediately afterwards. Um, but he may, he may still yet attack. I mean, there's no reason he can't just attack me while I'm sieging Mulverney. Uh, and if he does that, I'm pretty sure he'll win. He just has the better army. Um, but the longer he leaves it, the more units I can sort of ferry in to the siege. So the closer I can make it. Um, but for the time being, we're just fighting Mulverney's troops. And Mulverney's troops are not very threatening, it doesn't seem. Um, what's this guy in the red robe? Who's he? He's a... oh gosh, he's a Virgo Brett. Right, well, there you go then. Just a priest. It looks like my mages now are quite fond of um, casting Animate Dead at the end of combat. And they go off script, so that's uh, that's a thing. Anyway, we started to destroy the gate at Marverni, but we need more time to succeed. Uh, okay. So... As always, scouts are moving around. What else are we doing? Well, first of all, my little army down here is moving to Illidar to take it back from the zombies. It's going to take two turns, but you know he'll get there eventually. Uh, once he takes Illidar back, he'll head to Fomoria, pick up some Emedian warriors that I'm recruiting, and then he can be begin the slow process of ferrying those guys to the front lines. Uh, that might take a while. Uh, in Black Forest, we're recruiting one of these Fomorian druids. Uh, these guys are guaranteed to have Ur 2, and they have Priest Level 1, so they can build labs and temples, so that makes them useful anyway. And because they're Ur 2 guaranteed, then they can always cast Thunderstrike in a Storm, as long as they cast Storm Power. Uh, and they also are guaranteed to, t guaranteed to come with at least one, um, well, exactly one of either Water, Death, or Nature. So they're magically more powerful than the, f than the Furbolg Druids, but they are a bit more expensive at 200 gold. But they can build uh, temples, so I'm going to recruit one of them in Black Forest, move him to Woods of Weeping, and then he can build the lab and the temple there as we need it. Uh, in Woods of Weeping, I'm recruiting a lot more Furbog Warriors, as well as a commander, because I can't recruit mages here. Um, and I am ferrying the troops from here, as you can see, all these Furbog Warriors. 
um, to Black Forest, which currently has some Felbug Warriors in the garrison. So we're recruiting lots of Felbug Warriors, trying to move them to the front line slowly. We'll just keep sort of ferrying units, like a production line, through here into Moverni to help um, quicken the siege. Uh, and that's actually it for this turn. There's not a lot else going on. Um, recruitment is normal in uh, for Moria. Cuneral, just Felbog Druids. Um, Black Forest is just uh, this guy, like I said. Uh, that's about it. My uh, Pretender is searching for sites. Um, I'm not thrilled about the idea of sticking him in Mulvaney with all those black candles at the moment, so he can just search for sites, he can chill out for a while. Uh, only thing to look at, I suppose, is uh, research, which... Let me see what I'm doing here. I want to finish off Enchantment 2 uh, for personal regen. It's tempting to go all the way to 5 now, just because at 4 we get Cloud Trapeze, which is a teleport spell for Ermages, really useful, considering my terrain is all like map proof 1 and shit. Um, it's very difficult for me to move mages around at the moment, so that would help a lot. Uh, and then at Enchantment 5 we'd get Horde of Skeletons, of course, which is the big animate dead spell for combat. Uh, but I think no, we'll just leave it at 2 for now. We'll make sure, we really need to finish off Evocation, get Storm. Uh, that'll be useful to us. So that's the plan for now. Everything goes into Evocation for Storm, and then I suppose we'll start working on Conjuration as well. I think that's it. I think that's everything. My only commander that I haven't moved is this guy, because he doesn't have much to do at the moment. Um, yeah, that's everything. Okay then, well, short turn. Uh, hopefully Tiananog continues not to uh, attack us while we're sieging Marverni, and hopefully we can get a lot of troops into Marverni before... Um, well to end the siege as quickly as possible, because I don't want to be stuck there sieging for like 10 turns or something, that would be terrible. So, that's it. See you on turn 19. Hello. Another quite short turn. Um, research and enchantment is completed, so my pretender can now cast personal regen. Uh, whoops. What else did we get here? Give to the hair, revive king, flying shield, Nothing very interesting. I guess flight is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so I'm back in evocation now. Try and get storm quickly. Um, should take less than five turns. Famous last words. Uh, okay, nurse search for sites. Didn't find any. Ad hoc dentistry for search for sites. Didn't find any. Uh, unexpected event in Honoria. A group of free thinkers has been banned. 180 people left. Just <laughs> fair enough. Um, and in Glistendew Forest, peasants speak of ill omens and strange creatures that prowl the forests at night. First we got fucking aliens, now we got strange creatures. Uh, but we did get eight death gems from this event, so that's quite nice. Um, and that was it. Elbalus was discovered and attacked in Griffin Spires. Uh, so we saw Marvoni's troops there. But uh, fortunately for me, Elbalus was the scout that, uh, that was scripted to retreat. So he just retreated into uh, Gaeta here. Didn't even die. What a professional. Um, and we started to destroy the gate at the fort in Mavoni, but we need more time to succeed. I think we might need quite a bit more time, actually. I'm a bit, um, nervous now. This might take a while. Um, I am ferrying some more troops in. As you can see, there's lots of troops here heading in. But that, if I hit Y, that does just bring the total up to about, um, let's see. 40 plus 30 is 70. Plus 30 again is 100, 120-ish, 120-ish units. Slightly less. Slightly fewer, I don't know. Um, so 120 units is not great. But, not much we can do except keep sieging. Okay, what's happening this turn? These units finally attacking the undead in Illidor. We'll get that province back with its site. I can't remember what the site is, but it's a site, I remember that. Uh, and then we'll swing by Fomoria to pick up the troops there. Uh, scouts and site searching mage are walking around. Troops are being ferried, uh, and Fergus here is being moved to the Woods of Weeping to build the lab and the temple. My pretender is heading out to Kaz Dupar, um, just in case Mavoni decides to just be a, a nuisance and capture one of these two provinces. Uh, my pretender is going to be on guard. And then I guess my pretender could also retake Farah. Um, and maybe cap these two provinces as well. So he's pretty, he's pretty buff now. There's still black candles here unfortunately, but he's got regen. Uh, currently has 83 hit points with one black candle. 
Uh, and unfortunately, that's it for the turn. Not much else is going on. But if I just look around, I'm a bit nervous about a couple of things. First of all, Ermor, I guess, did go to war with Miklan. I have no idea how that war is going, though, because I have no scouts down here. So as you can see, I'm moving one scout down now. Uh, maybe I should move this scout down as well. This scout's going to die soon as anyway, unfortunately. The reason I was moving this scout here was just in case I was able to scout cap the province, but it's, I think it's probably unlikely, so let's just head down for more intel. Um, but yeah, so I've got lots of troops on my borders from both Ermor and Miklan, so that might be risky. Depends on if one person is significantly ahead in the war or not. Also over here, we have 70 en enemy units for Tinanog, but of course that's only the units I can see. All those units that have glamour I can't see in scouting reports, so there could be like 200 units here for all I know. Uh, and if that's the case, that's kind of uh, not good for me. Because as, as I said before, I'm pretty sure Tinanog's army beats my army, like, just straight up. So that is also making me kind of nervous. Um, I'm not sure about Beritos. I guess Beritos could attack me through here. Um, he must surely have more um, enticing targets than me, though. I'm not sure. But uh, but yeah, all we can do really is keep sieging Mavoni. We can't really do anything else until we've done this. Um, so that's it for this turn, unfortunately. Um, yep, and hopefully, hopefully nobody invades us just for a couple more turns, just so I can like start to reevaluate my situation. Recruitment is pretty normal at the moment. Um, it's a sorceress at home and a furball druid everywhere else. And that's it. So I'll see you on turn 20, I guess. And uh, thanks for watching. Hello, turn 20. Uh, last turn of the video. Let's see. First of all, we retook our province from the, uh, the zombies. And only lost the uh, barbarians, which is nice. Uh, so let's just remind ourselves what was here Oh, crack tower, two air gems per turn. Alright. So we finally have Illidor back. Oh, I forgot to put pr province defense in it. Okay, we got one province defense. Um, battling Gilgood, this was our scout, managed to see uh, some forces of Miklan attacking Ermor. So we can just take a quick look at some of our most, uh, some of Miklan's troops. See here, lots of uh, Jaguar warriors. His sacreds. These guys are incredible. Everybody knows about these guys. Uh, some Sun Warriors, who are also sacred. I've actually never seen these guys before. I didn't know Micklin had these guys. I've seen the Jaguars and the Eagles. I've never seen Sun Warriors. Um, they've got nice stats. They haven't got the cool shape-shifting that uh, Jaguars have, though. Uh, and also some Beast Bats, which are also sacred. Micklin has so, so many sacreds. Like, holy shit. Um, that's interesting that they only move three tiles. Very strange. Uh, okay. Oh, they move three because they're flying, of course, right. <laughs> sure, that makes more sense. Um, okay, uh, and then there was a battle in Marvoni. So Marvoni moved some troops uh, in to attack me. Didn't go very well for him, though. Uh, I'm not going to watch it because it's just a, a sort of straightforward slaughter. Um, as for events, Frost destroyed the corpse in Woods of Weeping. Um, I can't talk this morning, apparently. Uh, starvation is expected. Unrest plus 10, population minus 50. Gold minus 87, gold plus 1. Uh, that's really nice for us. And uh, an unexpected occurrence occurred in the Rusty Badlands. We gained a bone armor. Um, I wasn't sure what this is. So I looked it up. It's kind of interesting. This, this armor doesn't give any protection, it doesn't look like. But it gives you 5 cold resistance. And apparently it automatically casts Soul Vortex uh, at the beginning of the fight. And Soul Vortex is kind of a cool spell, actually. It, it drains life and, I think, also fatigue from all of the enemy units that are around you. Um, and actually, I think maybe also from all the friendly units that are around you, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah. So, even though it doesn't provide protection, it provides quite a lot of life regeneration and stuff, uh, I suppose. Or at least healing, uh, as long as you're surrounded by enemies in combat. So that's kind of a cool item, actually. I'm, I might... I might recruit, recruit a giant later and put it on him and see if he's, uh, see if he, see if he makes a cool thug. Uh, okay, and we're destroying the gate of Mavoni, but we still need more time to succeed, unfortunately. Um, movement this time is actually quite straightforward. Um, Anfar returns home, it's going to pick up the Nemedian warriors. 
uh, my commander here is heading back to the Woods of Weeping to start picking up more troops. And of course I also have this commander here, uh, Ardor the Furball Champion, waiting in Black Forest to also pick up more troops. But they haven't been recruited yet, so bear with me. Uh, and my pretender is just attacking Griffin Spires. He should take that, no problem. He's currently on 60, I think. Yeah, 63 hit points. Um, I can't imagine there are there's enough PD here to harm my pretender. I'm pretty sure even if he had like 40 points of PD, it wouldn't harm my pretender. So uh, that should go fine. Only other movements are scouts, and that's it. Still got a huge amount of Barishan units here on my border. Um, but they're just in the castle, I guess. And they can sail, I think, so they should just be able to... They might be heading over here, who knows. Um, Tinanog has fewer Furbolgs in Yellow Mountains now, at least according to the report. But of course, I still can't see his Glamoured troops. Um, and Ermor has this gigantic, huge army stack heading towards Miklan. Uh, and that's it, as far as the state of the world is concerned. So I'll end the turn there. Um, research, nothing interesting happening. Um, just, I'm just being a bit hesitant because I'm the last person to take my turn, so as soon as I hit end, that's it. The turn's gonna turn. But I think that's everything. So, see you in... well, I'll see you in the next video, actually. <laughs>